Hey guys and welcome back to another video tutorial on automate processes and building a basic website. So in this part 4 of the tutorial what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a little bit of a visual indicator so that when the user hovers their mouse over one of these navigation buttons we're going to basically make a star spin or you know do something flashy that just tells the user that hey you can click on this button and do something. So where we left off is we got our navigation links to work so we're loading in our different pages so let's get something a little bit more animated happening so I'm gonna head back into flash and I'm gonna head into my first button over here now all these buttons are exact duplicates of each other so if we move the text in one it's gonna move the text in the others as well likewise if we add anything to this button it's gonna be added to these as well so that's one of the benefits of using flash to do this stuff we only have to create something once and it gets duplicated across instantly so I'm just gonna move this nav text over a bit so I'm gonna left this I'm gonna let our origin point be up here in the top left corner of our nav text and in this room over here I'm gonna create a star symbol so if you've got the rectangles tool selected here in your flash tools menu just go ahead and click the mouse button on it and hover down to the polystar tool and from the options menu on the right I'm going to click on that I'm going to select the style to be a star set the number of sides to 5 and our point size is going to be 0.5 and let's not have a stroke on this star and let's set its color to be orange that'll do so I'm going to hold down shift and click and drag and just rotate my mouse a bit until I get the start of my star pointing upwards like so and let go you can see here it's duplicated across I'm just going to use the mouse pointer and bring that down to be here in the top left corner of my button clip so let's go ahead and turn this into a movie clip because we want to interact with it via our code so it has to be a movie clip so we can talk to it press F8 and let's call this MC star so movie clip star we'll set its registration point to the center that'll do and let's just nudge over our nav text a little bit and set its format to be left so that way if we add more text it's going to trail off this way instead of overlapping over our star and that looks pretty good that'll do let's give a name for our star so I'm just going to call this MC star in here as well and then over in flash develop let's create a couple of states for this button let's go back up to scene one and over to our code so we've set up an event listener here for when we click on the button we want it to do something but now we want to set up two more events we want to listen for when the user puts their mouse over the button so they roll over it and when the user takes their mouse off the button or they roll off it so I'm going to say MC nav button I'm going to add another event listener to it and this time we're going to listen for the roll over event and let's go to a function that we haven't made yet called nav roll over and likewise, let's set up another event listener for our MC nav button. And this time we're going to listen for the roll out event. And we're going to go to another function called nav roll out. Let's go ahead and create these two functions. So private function nav roll out. And I'm going to data type this to an event, a mouse event. Oops. That's better. It's not going to return anything, so I'll set it to void and set up the open close curly brackets. Now, I don't know whether I should be showing you this or not, but because we're using Flash Develop, it's meant to make your life easier, not harder. That's why we're using it. So, with our nav rollover, instead of typing out the whole function, if you click on it, anywhere in the middle of it, 
and press Control Shift One on your keyboard, you can actually click Generate Mouse Event Handler, and that generates the function pretty much what we just typed out here for you pretty much instantly. So another handy, useful thing in Flash Develop, which just speeds up your coding as long as you remember how a function is set up. It's very helpful. Don't get into the habit of typing this unless you're absolutely sure you know where, what type of event you're data typing and if it's going to return an object or not. So in our nav rollover function, let's do something with that star that we have inside of our MC nav button. So first thing we need to do is get a reference to which button was rolled, uh, was, yeah, rolled over by the mouse. And then what we want to do is set up a twin that basically animates. And do we want to do that here? Actually, no, we don't. But we'll set up the reference anyway. So we'll say, Bar MC nav clip, and we'll data type this to a movie clip, and this is going to be whatever our event target was that triggered it, and we're going to set that as a movie clip. So this is a little bit different to the way we set it up in class, but this is another way to do it, and it's a bit more proper as well because we get a reference to the clip as well. So actually before we even start and yeah, before we actually start interacting with the button, let's set up the tween that we want to animate our clip with first. So in our nav links, when we set them all up here, just after we set the text, let's set up the animation for our star. So what I'm going to do here is set up a new variable, which is going to be called, it's going to be a tween variable, so I'll start it off with a T, and it will be called nav tween. So T nav tween, we'll set that up as a tween object, and it's going to be a new tween. So when we open the round bracket here, Flash develop gives us a couple of helpful hints as to what we need to include to get this twin to work. So we need to first specify the object that we want to twin. So that's going to be our MC nav button and what we call our star inside of our button. So if we look back in Flash here, go inside the button, it's called MC star. So over here, our object that we're going to twin is going to be nav button MC star. So what property of this object do we want to tween? So in this case, we're going to tween its rotation. And we're just going to make it do a simple little 360 degree spin. So the next property we want is the name of the easing function to use. Now, easing might be a little bit, um, you might not have heard of it before. Basically what it means is it smooths out your animation so it makes it look a little bit nicer and visually more appealing to look at but in order to use it we need to include a class manually so I'm just gonna click anywhere go up the top and just after we import our FL transitions tween I'm gonna import an easing and these are all the easing types that we have in flash so we can use uh, should be transitions actually. Yep. So these are all the easing types we can use. It's back, bounce, easing, none, regular, and strong. So let's just go with a regular easing type. We'll select that, press enter, and then we'll come down here to where we're setting up our tween object and type in regular. And we'll just go and ease in. And you'll see what this effect does once we run our code. Let's just type that in for the moment. So what do we want our object's rotation to begin at? So we'll let it start at zero degrees. 
and we want it to finish up at 360 degrees, so one full spin. And how long do we want it to take? Well, let's let it take one second. And do we want to use seconds or do we want to use frames? So the option here is do you want to use frames on the timeline as Flash, as flash sets it up? So if you're running 30 frames a second, uh, it'll take 30 frames in order to go through one second of it. And typically most people just type in true for this um, parameter because we just want to use seconds. It's much easier to calculate than going in and figuring out, okay, my frame rate's 24, I need two seconds, so I need 48 frames, and ah, forget about that. So that will do it. Now what we need to do is attach this tween to our MC button. So to do that, we'll say our MC nav button, and we're going to say it's uh, star, yeah, star tween. That's the property name we're going to give it, and we'll set that to our T nav tween. Okay, so this tween object gets added to our button. And we're adding it to our button because once we get a reference to it down here, we can call upon this star tween and actually tell it to start playing once we roll over. So actually, let's do that now just to give you an example of what's going to happen. We get a reference of our movie clip down here. And on the next line, we're going to tell that tween to play. So we'll say MC nav clip dot star tween and let's start playing that tween. Let's save that and test. And you'll see they spin once and when you roll over we've got an error. Probably not found FL transitions tween. Okay. Uh, so the error we have is if we go back here it's not called play it's called start. So if you've got play type in here just get rid of that and type in start because that's what the flash inbuilt tween uses and I'm used to using green sock so sorry about that. So click start and then save and test your work and you should see the stars spin once but when you roll over it, uh, nice, we got them to spin on each button and go back to normal. So we don't actually have to have anything in this rollover state but we can make it uh, actually, no, we'll keep it simple. We won't put anything in the rollover state. So we've got uh, animations to happen now. And actually, let's move these buttons in a bit of a better spot on our stage. Let's group them down here. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that works. So we've got home, gallery, and contact. We we'll click on these, they load in. And you can see that the tweens are independent of each other. But sometimes you get this really weird error where you try to roll over the tween and it gets stuck like that. And it keeps trying to loop and the mouse is losing interaction and then gaining it again. There's a quick fix to that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into one of our nav buttons here. We'll go into the timeline and we'll just add a new layer above it. And we'll double click on the layer name. We'll call this hit area. And a little bit of a cheap trick, I guess, if you want to call it. Uh, what we're going to do is just select any color for the time being. Go to our Polystar tool and select the rectangle one instead. And let's just drag out a rectangle over the whole button. So it'll be covered in orange, but that's fine. Just go back and select the rectangle that we just made on this new layer. And in the fill properties over here, which you can't see, let me do it over here instead. We've got an alpha property, so just click on that and turn it down to zero. And then click off. Now we've still got this clip here, and this is going to be our interaction area for the button, but it's invisible. So when we save and test our work, if we try to go over a little bit of the area, you can see that it's no longer twitching anymore, because the whole button area here is interactive. So I think that'll do it for this tutorial. We've got a little bit happening here and we've got our nav buttons to look good and actually be functional. In the next tutorial, we'll get the pages to smoothly fade out once they're 
well, once we call a new page to load in, we'll get the old page to fade out and the new page to fade in. So we'll use those tweens again and get a bit more of a smooth kind of transition happening between each of our pages instead of them just popping in. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one.